so I expect us to be in that top quartile. That's our goal this year is that we'll be in that top quartile in actually all of our grades. You'll see that goal coming up. And I echo the same with Pat with fifth grade. Uh, we made some pretty major changes in fifth grade and how we're operating here, and so I'm hoping for that to be a lot higher. What um, then comes up, though, in our next slide is the ISAT, and this is where I said before, we look at two very different kinds of things with these tests. On the one hand, the map is very focused on the growth. Is each student making a target growth? ISAT said that they get over the bar that the state of Illinois requires you to get over. And um, the irony kind of here is five through eight, fifth grade looks the best. Um, that they had the best score. They were in the about 93rd percentile um, of their students meeting and exceeding what the state of Illinois' goals were. And then sixth, seventh, and eighth um, also uh, over the level last year was a 77% level, like I said, this year is an 85%, um, no, excuse me, this year, last year was a, a, a 10, 10, 11 was an 85% level, and then uh, this year will be the 92nd, so we've got a little bit. One of the things that um, happens here is we push kids to take algebra as our primary course that we teach in eighth grade, which is a narrow focus on math. The ISAP test looks at all elements of math, geometry, et cetera, et cetera. And so this year we're going to be, um, when we get closer to ISAP, kind of broadening out our algebra class to say, you know, let's go back and take a look at some of those concepts that you haven't really looked at for pretty much a year because seventh grade math is a lot of free algebra. And I think that's part of the reason why we um, kind of sink down a bit in the uh, eighth grade level. So um, when you look at this chart, you have to change your brain for a second because remember that upward climb I wanted you to see and have for the three columns? Blue is the state. That's what the state, so that's, if the orange is our 9-10 year and the red is our 10-11 year, but blue is the state average. Okay, so it's not, if you're looking at it in blue, gosh, it looked like you dropped in everything. As you look at that, that's actually the state average versus our average. Our, our, the red is where um, our students are um, for, la for this last year. And in, in third and fourth grade, um, pretty amazing stuff there. Um, really, for us, that means one or two students not meeting in the grade level. It's look, maybe 4% or 5%, but that's one student or two students. Not good enough, but <laughs> um, close. I'll, I'll go just keep going. Yes. Okay, so now back to switch your brain again. Here we are looking for the upward climb. This is our three years of data. This is language arts changing the topic or topic subject. Um, so here's um, here's was a really really big disappointment for us last year. Year before last. So we're looking at our blue, our nine ten data. It language arts last year before last was our strongest performance. So our, our, our strongest performance in student meeting their target rate. We didn't modify a whole lot this past year because our results the prior year were really pretty something else. <laughs> and so then um, we were quite shocked, honestly, that the results um, were where they were at. At winter term, we, we do the mid-year test, winter term, <laughs> our results didn't look like these results, particularly in fourth grade. Um, they were right about the 70th percentile in terms of kids we had determined were on track to meeting the target rate by the end of the year. Um, and so um, language arts um, was, was reasonable in second and third grade, but very disappointing in fourth grade here, and it, we hadn't seen that. Um, we have made a, a number of modifications, some um, supplemental language skill work for fourth grade for this year based on and making sure um, our students are getting um, really a kind of a grammar based supplement to them to help them out in terms of that for this year. And once again, fifth grade, something we're working very heavily on. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, um, we looked pretty good in those. Um, so I brought up in sixth and eighth grade over what we had previously. Seventh grade down just a little bit, but uh, overall our LA scores um, doing well. We're still working through. We added last year a um, grammar textbook in um, seventh grade and supplemented some others, and so we're continuing to add to our curriculum and the way that we're handling that, and then also a time when it's uh, so then, how again, how do they do, what does that mean in terms of that growth nationally? So again, we're back to the fact that in um, third, six, and eight, we're talking about our teachers and schools <coughs> together performing 
above the 95th percentile. I mean, some of the very, very top in the nation's scores in terms of the amount of growth that our students are making there. Um, as I alluded to on the previous slide, um, there are, it's certainly it's not okay where we're at in terms of our growth ranking. Um, and I'm at the fourth grade team today, in fact, and that's all I talked about is for language arts is going to be in spring and what we're doing. So it's certainly, we spend a, a ton of time looking at this. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on it. There's a lot of, um, uh, not necessarily because of the number, but because of the learning and what we need to each student to be able to learn. And we want them to be most equipped for their next year. So it's, it's serious stuff with us. We, we spend a lot of time working with Reading, here we go. So back to the looking for the upward trend, changing subject now on reading. Um, in reading, you can see um, red is where our last year, so our student performance um, certainly is, um, our first grade was our, actually kindergarten and first grade it is, um, we're still up, up pretty high in kindergarten and first grade in terms of, we're still at 92%, but it's slightly lower than the year before. Um, in first grade, um, that one was in the 80s, it was in the 80s for the first 10 and three years, so um, still working on that one. Second, third, and fourth grade had their best years in terms of reading and reading overall in the building. All our student growth was at 70% or higher, so 71 or 2% or higher. And you'll see in a minute what that looks like in terms of national growth. And, and anyway, okay. Um, last year, our highest years were sixth and eighth grade. We fell back a little bit from those highs, but still very good in sixth grade in particular. Seventh grade was um, a trouble spot for us last year, and, uh, the previous year I should say, and we um, made a significant progress in that area. So um, things that we're working on there, I was happy to report that those did better. And then again, as we look at it growth nationally, what percent were in that upper quartile um, in there, uh, uh, two, three, four, six, and seven, all falling in that upper quartile. It, it's in K-4 specifically, and in 5A, but K-4, we need kids reading, and we need them prepared and able to read so that they can move on to learn from their reading. So um, this is probably the most important subject area, in my opinion, in terms of, um, they're all important, but um, I'm real proud of the student and, and teacher performance. I mean, you explain the how do you go 90% in the fourth grade, yeah. down to 30% in the fifth, and then back up to the sixth and sixth grade, back up to 90? How does that it's function in this environment? I'm confused how you could have that sort of a range from grade to grade. It's grade. all about growth, so it matters not at all whether they come in low or high. It, it's not an issue of, well, they came in really hot, that they, they, they came in high, and then they got low, and then they came back high again. It's, year to year to year growth, which is, I mean, extreme measure. Very few districts look at it this way, um, because you can, you know, if I'm Stevenson, I just want to say, well, you know, I'm great all the time, right? And I don't look at the growth model so much. We look at the growth model because we're saying it's important to us that whether your kid comes in and they're, you know, three years below grade level in their understanding, or they're three years above grade level, we want each one of those kids to make the growth. And so when we see this, I mean, that's how you can get such great variation between it and why we look at it go, okay, so, because if I looked at it only as their actual achievement, that line's gonna be much, much smoother. I mean, they might dip a little bit, not so much they're a point or two less than you expected in fifth grade if I do a linear kind of um, look at it. But because I look at growth, I can identify where my real problems are, where am I not growing? And obviously currently fifth grade is one of those areas that we didn't grow as we should. Again, we're gonna get back to the, and go to the next slide. We look at, again, where does fifth grade rank in terms of the ISAP, they look very, very good. So if this was what I looked at, I wouldn't really know that I have some work to do at a grade level. The slide before tells me where I have my work to do, not how well my kids achieve. Okay. And, and you know, the, the, like you said, this is the first time we had a picture of what growth looked like across the country. We, we've always had 
a focus on growth. It's always been real important for us to meet every single kid that walks in the door's needs um, versus us having, and I don't want to say just, it's certainly not easy to have everybody meet in McSafe, <laughs> but, but if, if this just one benchmark is here, I could have a lot, you know, a portion of kids that really never get there if I didn't have that individual growth focus too for those kids that maybe aren't as capable, but because we're really, really, really targeting individuals versus the whole group, our focus is every single kid versus the whole group. And, and I said here, student performance is um, very good, and, but it has a, it just has a level that you can get to here. And some of our kids, when they walk in in third grade, could take ISAP test and pass it when they walked in the door. They could, they could meet before you even taught them a thing. Um, I can't say that's true when I get the math test. I find out how, you know, how smart you are, if you will, and then I go from where you were at to go there. So two different kinds of tests. Anyway, science, Mr. Ted. Um, uh, so science is the final section. It's actually divided into two different pieces. General science, which is your science knowledge in one sense. Um, and it's looking at that, so uh, our, our percent meeting seeing um, did, again, relatively well in 6th and 7th grade for where we've been in the past, 5th grade down and 8th grade also um, probably um, just made some changes in staffing in 8th grade, so we're expecting to move that number up. Concepts and processes are an understanding of how science operates, so um, understanding the scientific model and all of those kinds of things happens in the concepts and processes part of it. Again, 6th and 7th grade doing okay, 5th and 8th are areas that we're needing to work in um, on that. There isn't a national norm study for that in science. This is the ISAT um, look at science. So for 4th grade, um, we went down um, a bit from the previous year. It's not something that we focus a ton in on um, K through four, so we're real interested in that seventh grade level and seeing that um, go well because we do start really heavily in sixth and seventh grade, um, pushing our science curriculum and seeing the growth that we're hoping for in that, so um, did well in the seventh grade. And I'm gonna turn over to Terry Zipsky, our pupil personnel director. Well, in addition to the ISAT, and all special ed students have to take the ISAT and MAP and they have to follow and, and look at the, the guidelines and reach a certain level.